my plan was to talk about a uh, few stuff already, win or lose. Um, I'm going to try to be coherent because this is not for me. Yes, we lost today. I'm obviously, I'm not, I'm not happy with that. But um, I'm not happy also about the lack of understanding of a clear situations. So I'm going to explain myself. After tonight's game, we are at 39 matches played. We were mandated to have three goalkeepers on the team sheet for CCC. This is what we did. We had to use a call-up for a friendly, a friendly game against Aston Villa. So why I'm not happy before the game? All the week it's happened, I was not happy about that. Because there is, there is a rule, as you know, we can use only four times, four call-ups, one player from the reserve team who has a contract. As you know, you know the issue that we had with the goalkeepers, with Evan Bush. So we tried to anticipate that. We trade for adding a fourth goalkeeper, knowing that we could have a situation like this today. And when we ask before the game to have another call-up for our goalkeeper for the reserve team, they said no. Knowing that this game, Seattle, we were supposed to play this game in March, around March. So for me, yes, we lost. But again, the MLS, the league, there is a clear evolution about the way we do things, the numbers of games that we have, there is addition for the League's Cup, there is addition for the World Cup, and so on and so on and so on. We are pleased with that. All year when you ask me the question about how many games you're going to be tired, we have, we have a lot of games and so on, I never complain. Because I said, we won. So this is the reward of the fact that we won. So we have games and we are pleased with that we are proud of that but i cannot understand when there is a lack of coherence with a simple rules that why we don't use a color when we do the friendly game the preseason game we played aston villa so stars and cole we called them they played zero minutes and we use all the eight call-ups total for them so what is the point i'm not asking to ban the collapse. I'm asking to add more collapse because we have more games. I'm not saying that we will not sign players. I would like young players, that's why I'm here. I like also odd players. But then we should have consistency. It's a wrong message if we don't adjust that with the number of games that we have. It's a wrong message. The league wants to add more young players, no problem. I started my career at 18 years old, but I stopped at 22 years old. Maybe I started too fast. Maybe I, I earned a lot of money when I, when I was 18 years old, but at 22 years old, I had no more money. So what is the signal? So we're gonna sign a player to give him a, a good salary? At 18 years old or 17 years old, uh, instead of winning $30,000, 30, we're going to give him a salary of $80,000. He's going to be happy, but at the end of the day, he will not play. There is different pathway for few players. So the uh, CBA, they have to understand that. And I'm not upset because we lost the game. I, 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 was a bit, I was upset already before the game, all week, because this is not coherent. Thank you. Oh. A lot to unpack wow. in there, and the frustration from Wilfred Nancy, uh, severely palpable. Charlie, when you, when you listen to everything he said, 
and his points of contention with the way the league is set up and the rules about call-ups. Um, how, how justified is Wilfred Nancy in, in feeling egregious by? He's right. He's right, 100%. And this was a, one of the things we talked about when it came to U.S. Open Cup. How many call-ups can mm -hmm. you have for, yeah. these, for this competition? You throw in Leagues Cup, U.S. Open Cup. He's talking about friendlies with Aston Villa. Of course you want those opportunities for your young players, for any player in your club. That's an, another opportunity to impress a foreign club so that you could have a potential sale, right? That's what this league is. It's a selling league. Mm -hmm. So in order to have those, those assets perform, you need to have options. And with all the games, you rest players, you need uh, opportunities to bring up other players. And, and in this case, you have a, a game during international window. So of course you're missing, you're down players already. So I love the fact that he was very coherent in, in, in his thoughts saying, I get it, the heat of the moment, we lose and you would expect me to, to explode because it, and it's not because we lost. Yeah. yeah. It's not because we lost. And it's because before this, I knew this situation was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And they try to anticipate that situation. Towards what he said at the end also sheds light on the reality of the situation. As teams go into more tournaments, play Lee's Cup, perhaps you're so Open Cup, um, CONCACAF Champions, Cup. Club World Cup, all these things, the CBA needs to follow suit. And maybe the CBA at this point in time can help the large majority of the teams in the league, but there will be moments where it feels like Columbus Crew is several steps ahead of mm -hmm. what's needed from the CBA to, to cover them full on. Because obviously you want this league to be sustainable for the players that are fringe players so that they can dream of having a, a, a life in professional football and a team like Columbus who seemingly looks like a model of a club beyond the scope of MLS in the sense that they can compete in everything and they want to be as competitive as possible. But if they're shackled by some rules of, of the CBA, you can have a situation like this. So it's, it's the dynamics between MLS, the CBA, and teams that are just outperforming what is in, in thought the of MLS teams. Not right. handing contracts out for like, right. like it's candy. Yep. Um, all right, well, to help us shed even more light on the entire situation, we're uh, absolutely thrilled to welcome in our friend Tom Bogart. Hi, Tom. Morning, everybody. A nice, light, fun subject of going through the uh, call-up <laughs> rules in, in the MLS CBA and, and rules and regulations. Brilliant. Exactly. <laughs> Lock, locked in on a Monday morning. Locked in on a Monday, exactly. <laughs> um, all right, Tom, you know, we obviously just listened to the press conference from, from Wilfred Nancy. Can you kind of just explain how the MLS rules are set up in terms of calling up young players and, and then why Wilfred Nancy is so frustrated with, with how it all works? Yeah, for me, Wilfred Nancy is completely right. This is an unfortunate side effect of some of these rules. And every team is allowed to call up players from the second team. You can do that four times a season. The players, I don't believe, can play more than twice of those four call-ups, right? Uh, but getting into the weeds of this rule, you they called up both of their uh, second team. There are only two second team goalies under contract each four times, so they were not allowed to call them up anymore. The frustration here is, first of all, this game wasn't supposed to be played this weekend. This was an international a FIFA break, and teams get to kind of pick and choose if they want to play or if they don't want to play uh, so they can have their full roster, but they'll have to add a midweek game at another time. The Columbus crew opted not to play this weekend, but they had to play because of a rescheduled game because they made the CONCACAF Champions Cup mm. final. Mm -hmm. Again, these are supposed to be good problems and good things. With it, they were without Patrick Schulte on international duty with the United States this weekend and Nico Hagen on international duty with Guatemala. Evan Bush, their third goalkeeper, has been injured since April. Um, they traded for Abraham Romero specifically with this in mind. I was talking to sources when that deal happened, and they were like, this is, ex like, we, we're like we fine with, like, Schulte Hagen. Uh, we don't know, like, if Bush is going to be back anytime soon. So for international breaks, I was told September and October, we're going to need another goalkeeper because we're probably going to be screwed if everybody gets called up. And that's kind of exactly what happened. The frustration here, on top of everything else, is that it would be common sense to just call up another goalkeeper. All both of the goalkeepers did not appear in one of the games. One of the frustrations is that CONCACAF made them have two goalkeepers on the bench for the CONCACAF Champions Cup games. That wasn't an issue until Evan Bush got injured. When Evan Bush got injured, their last three games, both games against Monterey, and then the final against Pachuca, they had to use three of those eight call-ups between the two goalkeepers. Another one that, had, that was used that I don't know how or why it counts was the friendly against Aston Villa. 
In that friendly, Patrick Schulte was at the Olympics. There's another uh, rule stipulation just for this year that teams are supposed to get Olympic exemption call-ups. That if you had a player at the Olympics, you could call up a second team player without counting towards their four or going over their four. For instance, the New York Red Bulls had a second team left back. He's been on the bench seven times this season for the first team. The last three of which was during the Olympics because John Tolkien was at the Olympics. I don't understand why, why that didn't count in the math for the Columbus crew. Why a friendly counted at all in the beginning, to be fair. Um, and I don't know why they were declined extreme hardship. And one more point before I, I like let you guys go back to questions um, is Wilfred Nancy said something about the CBA. I think he's hinting at the Players Association there. This isn't just an MLS decision. For the, uh, for the Players Association, they want to protect their players against you can't just call them up, you know, nine times without giving them a contract. And I think that's completely right and good. But this is kind of a common sense situation where it, like it doesn't really like like they were forced into this because of emergencies and, and then like i don't think the crew were trying to exploit this rule you listen to everything wilford nancy said it's like you we could have tried to sign one of them to a senior contract but then what like it's not the right time he's not going to play and then how do you go back to the second team? so for all of those reasons it's a really unfortunate situation particularly that abraham romero got a red card and that's the only reason why we're talking about this and in theory like what's super unfortunate for the league for the club for the pa for everybody is if they had a second team goalkeeper on the bench, Abraham Romero gets sent off, maybe they lose four or nothing anyway. Who knows? But the fact that we don't know is is a huge indictment. Yeah, Tom, this just feels like they went down all the possible avenues for this to happen in such a ginormous season where you're playing in so many competitions and it led to this point. It's absolutely unfortunate. I have, I have a two-part question. The first one's really quickly, just so we're clear, so I'm clear because I don't know. Those four <laughs> call-ups that you get throughout the season, they're call-ups which means that you don't have to sign a player to a first-team right. contract? Correct. They're, they're called short-term call-ups where you're with the first team for four days. I think Nancy kind of hinted at it. You get a kind of a bonus for okay. this as well, but you don't get the kind of full season contract. So do you see this more as a player union issue or an MLS issue? That's a good question. I don't I don't want to speculate because I don't have the definite answer, but I do know that it, it's somewhere between the two. This wasn't a unilateral decision by the league, and I don't assume that it was a unilateral decision by the Players Association either. But I, again, like I do think it's important that both of these sides would have to agree on it because that's kind of where the rules and regulations come from for the limits on the short-term calls so teams don't abuse them, which, again, right. at its heart, I think is a very good thing. Is there, is there anything that they can do, maybe appeal the exemption that they weren't able to get versus New York Red Bulls? Is there something that can be done? And for me personally, I think a lot of this falls back on MLS's extremely complex rule set where I have a feeling if that didn't exist, maybe this doesn't happen. Yeah, I mean, I'll start with your second one in that if if the, the, the rules were set where, where you could just kind of freely call players up between the first and second team, like kind of global soccer, then this wouldn't be an issue. We wouldn't be talking about it. We should not know what short-term call-ups mean and, and the Byzantine, all the words in, in, into these rules. I shouldn't have to be coming on to explain it. And then apparently they, they asked for an extreme hardship exemption, which again is a funny set of words that, that shouldn't really have anything to do with soccer. But here we are. And then in terms of, of you know, the next international window, I don't know. We're going to run into the same problem again. I don't see why it would be any different in, in terms of the league and the Players Association if they ruled against it now and they didn't allow this call. I don't see why they would change their mind other than public pressure. And maybe that'll happen, but I, I, I kind of would doubt it because you're kind of setting a precedence that, like, th like last weekend, would have been the time to make an exception, and they didn't. So I don't know why they kind of would change their minds for October. So, Tom, in the immediate future, let's say for next season, are we going to see teams not being held responsible for playing during these international windows, especially a team like uh, Columbus Crew, where you're losing some of your best players, your, your pillars within your, your squad. And also, would you say Columbus Crew are now out of the Supporter Shield race, given that this, this loss kind of hits hard? Yeah, so there's always kind of the constant conversation. Can the league fit the schedule in without playing through international breaks? Like, all of the top leagues around the world don't, right? And the more and more international players that come to the league is great news, the more tricky it gets during these international breaks. Um, there's just so many games. There's so many tournaments. There's, there's, there's everything. Like, I, I've seen quotes from Kevin De Bruyne. I've seen quotes from, from a couple other Manchester City players talking about their fixture congestion. Like, it's, it's the same over here. So, again, teams kind of have the option 
to not play during a, some of these international breaks, and the crew tried to not play. But because of their success earlier in the season, there was just no other place to fit this game, so they had to play. So maybe they'll try that again. I like I don't really see room in the calendar if League's Cup is going to stay the way it is. If the first round of the playoffs, that's best of three, that really extends that that playoff system, if that stays the way it is, you're just running out of weeks in the season to keep taking breaks. And I would much prefer that they don't play through the international break. I think that you sacrifice games elsewhere, probably the best of three first round because nine teams make the playoffs and we just play 34 games. <laughs> Maybe it should just be a one-off instead of best three, but like that would be one of the ways to try to save the room. But there's more gate revenue. There, there's more games for Apple TV. There's more opportunities for teams and everything else. So like the business side of, of the league, that's probably viewed as a success. Same things like League's Cup is a success, I'd imagine, in the eyes of the league. And then they, they've continued to say that. So... Oh. Where are, are the weeks coming from? Where are the games going to... They would have to come from somewhere, and I don't think anything's going to budge. It is. It's crazy. I and mean, what did Wilfred Nancy say? They played 39 matches already, and they still have however many left in the regular season. <laughs> Playoffs on top. I mean, it's just... It is Burn insane. Up. Insane. Uh, Tom, thank you so much for taking the time. Great stuff. Incredibly helpful. We appreciate you so much. Cheers, guys. Talk, talk to you soon.